As a pastor, I have the privilege and the responsibility of caring for the spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being of this congregation. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been sad to see how many, me included, have acted and reacted on social media. If you watched my sermon from last week, you'll have a little bit of an idea of where I'm coming from. In the beginning, social media held high hopes for being a venue that would connect us as human beings. The people that I've been able to connect and reconnect with through social media have been a blessing to me in my life. Social media has also allowed me to stay connected to events and happenings in our community. When COVID struck, I was thankful for the fact that at least virtually, we were able to stay close to each other. But there's also a very negative side to social media, and that seems to be winning out over the positive side. Social media allows us a false curtain of protection that gives us permission to drop our filters and our guard. We're free to say things in print that we would never allow ourselves to say if we were face to face with each other. Unfortunately, that level of honesty and directness can often be misunderstood and misinterpreted, and it often is. When things like Facebook were designed, they were designed to connect people, to check on assignments and to give notice to events. But now that they're corporate, social media needs controversy to sell ads. You all know the adage, good news doesn't sell newspapers. Well, pictures of puppies and kittens don't sell advertisements. But controversy does. And it keeps you coming back for more. And then they can continue to sell more ads. That is the design of these kinds of platforms. That is why they're not quick to deal with false information. That false information fuels controversy, and more controversy sells more ads. Conversations that might have been normal and civil conversations in person easily become arguments. Our inability to read the tone of voice or the intent of the person speaking stunts our ability to truly understand each other. These arguments build walls and barriers between us that drive us apart from each other and th threaten the connection that we have in the body and the blood of Christ. And trust me, I know that even I am guilty of this myself. But we as the people of God have got to be better. Right now, with all the conflict in our world, people are looking to the church to see if faith in the Messiah really does make a difference in our lives. The scriptures tell us that we're to think about things that are noble, just, honest, and of good rapport, Philippians 4.8. But all too often in recent days, I've noticed social media starting to steal my peace. It's threatening the wholeness that I search to create in my life and my faith. So it is to that end that I have made the decision that I will be deactivating my Facebook account until at least January 1st. At that time, I'll decide how and if I want to return to that medium. This means that I will not be able to post the worship services on the Grace Facebook page. So please, if you're watching this on Facebook, I'll put a link in the description to our congregational YouTube page. Please go there and subscribe to our page so that you can keep up to date with our worship services and other Grace Moments videos. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you will be given notices with other things that are coming up. I want to encourage others to commit to pulling back in some form or another from social media for a time. Give yourself a break. You can limit your exposure, take a leave of absence, or simply deactivate your accounts. I think all too often social media has taken the place of face-to-face -face encounters in our world. So the question comes, what do we do in the meantime? Well, it's an ancient practice called 
conversation. Perhaps on your vacation from social media, you can call somebody or meet them for coffee. Perhaps plan a dinner or a picnic with someone you might not know very well and get to know them a little bit deeper. Or maybe even reconcile with someone you have had a conflict with. We need to build more bridges in our world, not more barriers. And please find a reliable source for getting your news. This has often been deemed the information age, but I think it's more like the misinformation age. There are a lot of nefarious sources claiming to be news in our world. And all too often, people will read something and they'll believe it without checking it out to make sure it's true or not. But we also have at our fingertips all sorts of good and reliable information. Search for those proven forms of news and rely on them. Now I know, this is not an airport and I don't have to announce my departure. But I wanted to share with this congregation my plans and my intentions as it pertains to my involvement in social media. You'll still be able to contact me through Facebook Messenger because that's a totally different app. But I will be deactivating my actual Facebook account within the next few days. I hope others will consider a similar move as we work to build a stronger grace and a more peaceful community. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul encourages us to make every effort to maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. That is my goal, and that is my focus for ministry. Thank you.